in the segment of mid-size performance sedans, this year is one of the last of its kind. The Alfa Giulia Quadrifoglio in the updated version. Recently, we've seen Mercedes C63 AMG going to the four-cylinder side and, well, guess what? No one's buying it anymore. So people going for the BMW M3, the Audi RS5 or also the Alfa Giulia Quadrifoglio, the most exotic one of this pair. And we can see the design with the typical Alpha logo in the front, carbon fiber use here, also for the front splitter. In the QV, you also have it in adaptive style that it deploys at the speed over 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. New with this facelift are these headlamps. So you have new LED technology, finally, and also a new daytime running light signature with this three element design that was taking over also from the recent Alpha SUVs, for example. I think it suits the car very well and definitely a very strong stance, this Italian design, also with special gaps here on the hood for more ventilation. The length at 4 meters 64 or 183 inches. Wheels, 19 inch standard here in this open spoke design. Here our special quadrifolio batch for this 100 years anniversary edition. Then more carbon fiber at the side mirrors and also at the lower side skirt right there. Yeah, and I think depending on the light, this color once again is really beautiful. Also very sensual line right here. Interesting that technology wise, you get an adaptive suspension. You can put it stiffer or a little bit softer for more comfort. In the rear, the tail lamps are a little bit more transparent now in the design. Then carbon fiber rear wing, we can see it here once again. And the Quadrifoglio version gets these Akrapovich exhausts. Really massive, real deal, also with carbon fiber around there. Even more massive than its competitors, also with this huge diffuser here. And bear in mind, the Giulia has all of that horsepower just on the rear axle. The turning indicators in the front were super great, but here in the rear, mm, they could have invested something more, couldn't they? To be precise, the civilized Julia versions like the 2 liter turbo, 4 cylinder, it's also available with all wheel drive. However, here the Quadrifoglio, the 2.9 liter V6, only rear wheel drive. Here now at 520 horsepower, so 10 horsepower more with this upgrade. Acceleration figure remains at 3.9 seconds to 1 km an hour or 62 miles an hour. We'll have a lot of fun with this. A pretty thick alpha key fob, then door closing sound. It's quite okay actually. Then inside of the doors, more carbon fiber and this open one you can really touch and feel so they don't have this high gloss cover above it. Very interesting solution. Really tiny door pockets as for storage. That's a theme of this vehicle as well. And then we can see the steering wheel with more carbon fiber. In this case then the shiny covering with the Quadrifoglio logo. I like it that we have the red start stop engine button on the steering wheel and real buttons so you can easily control the car while driving. You can see here these very large shifting pedals are directly at attached to the rear column so they don't move together with the steering wheel. Then the seats. These are special sport seats for the Quadrifoglio version with a lot of Alcantara microfiber on the inside. You should also go for these then if you have the chance to in your market. They add a little bit more comfort and of course more raciness together with these microfiber accentuations here at the steering wheel itself. And for a performance sports car, I feel it's really comfortable. And also if you compare these seats to the C63 AMG or to the M3, these are very comfortable seats indeed. I would say the most comfor comfortable ones together with the Audi RS5. And headroom here, still good, good left, although I'm 189 or 62. This one here without any panoramic roof and the steering wheel column controls here in manual way up and down. Yeah, that, do you hear that? There is, you know, like some resistance in it, so not the smoothest solution. Yeah, but when I look then at the instruments here, this typical Alpha style where it's really caged in here in this goggle design, that's pretty cool. Interior cockpit overview, a lot of sensual details. 
actually pretty clean as well. Also with this integrated screen, just the screen size is really small. Then we have these contrast stitches, 100 years special anniversary edition. And I love that we still have manual climate dials here and a real shifting lever going old school. And once again, this open carbon fiber here in the lower part. So it has a, it has a lot of nice true racy details. Look at that also once again this Alcantara microfiber insert at the steering wheel. In the front USB A charger, then adaptive cup holders and more open carbon fiber. In here we can control the driving modes or separately put the suspension stiffer or softer again. Middle armrests, underneath the smartphone with two more connections, USB A and USB C. Digital instruments, this is when you just turn the ignition and when you start up the vehicle entirely goes like this and you can also switch the views for example like this or you can also pick this retro view then you have more like this you know these retro numbers and on the left side the speed you maybe see that here on this part the 40 and the 20 goes in that direction and the other numbers in the other direction and this is taken from vintage alpha models however the turning indicator sound Maybe that's all supposed to be vintage, but I feel it just sounds cheap a little bit. Or what's your take on it? Tell me in the comments. For the infotainment system, most important thing is that you can use Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but you can already see here, it is really slow, and I'm not sure what I thought about this. It is super old, super slow. You can't put an infotainment system at the car of that price. So this is one of the downsides here. And also the image quality is pretty weird. Let me put on the rear view camera. I mean, what is this? Seriously? Well, it's kind of cozy in here. And I also like the microfiber seats here on the inside of the rear. It's by the way, also with some animal skin parts here, depending on the, on the individual part. But here the legroom, hmm, yeah, that's not a specialty of this vehicle. It's also a little bit shorter than the competitors. And you see here with tall L's when also tall ones are driving, doesn't really work. Headroom, however, is fine. This also works for tall ones in the rear. The trunk here with the many opening and it's around 480 liters. The width here a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches. And the same goes also for the width. 95 centimeters or 37 inches also limited in the height typical for a sedan and to fold the seats well that's actually good because we can pull these levers here and then well we would need to push pretty hard here or the more elegant solution is going around and then fold them like this welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the julia quadrifolio here in the normal mode here different to the sport mode like dynamic mode it's then directly louder and when you turn and hold it you go into the race mode but you should only do that on closed roads because now all the assistance systems are off i have good acceleration either normal demon or left side here manual mode then i do the upshifting completely myself Rob, that was zero to one kilometers an hour zero to 60 miles an hour uphill actually and Maybe you also seen on camera here when we're in the race mode and I hit the throttle, the rear really gets a little bit shaky at times. So you should only do that when it's really dry and you know what you're doing and no one is coming anywhere and so on. So especially your first gear. Yeah, this, this vehicle is an extreme vehicle in that race mode. You have to be aware of that. It is, as I said, one of the last of its kind in this very extreme manner. Wow. And directly at the 100 again, although we're going uphill, it's really a gem of an engine and it handles so well. It's really so much fun to do this here. It feels so, so well balanced as well and using the shifting levers here yourself. So this vehicle really shines race mode plus manual mode. But as I said, when you're going to public roads now, definitely safer to put to the sports mode we also have good performance there the main difference is that all the stability systems are in place then and this is of course a very important thing to have so yeah. here for example very nice acceleration but at the same time i was more in control of a, in a way of they have this safety net you know so in the dynamic mode you can use it on public roads and then 
we don't have this effect that the rear would slide all the way around. In the race mode this can happen, so you need to be more aware of that and be able to control the car a little bit more. This by the way here, the Nürburgring Grand Prix track from the outside, so always a nice like scenic and iconic place to be. Of course we can't drive so fast, but we're heading out now to some sort of nice countryside roads. Ah, shifting down, so much fun, 90 degree corner, super precise from its steering wheel. Ah, beautiful. Ah, this is awesome. This vehicle is all about the drive. And yeah, there are some shortcomings in the interior, like this outdated infotainment system. Build quality wise, they cannot catch up in every respect, like without the BMW and Mercedes. With Mercedes, may, meanwhile, maybe, but you know, especially not with BMW. But then again, the drive is one of the best in the segments, if not the best, because it's so well done, you know? So you have so much control over the vehicle, especially if you leave some of the assistance systems in, and then shifting yourself with the huge manual shifting pedals, pedals is so much fun. Wow, great. Suspension, by the way, I've set it on the stiffer note at this moment, but as long as the road is, you know, very good status and so on. It's absolutely fine. It does master a compromise of sportiness and comfort. Also these seats here with the microphone and the inside especially, I think you can still use it as a daily driver. And that's not always the case in a comfortable, comfortable way with the top sports models of the manufacturers. Here now when you have some intermission in a village or something, you can also go back to the normal mode, then also the suspension automatically switches to the softer mode, so we have a little bit more to play with then. Um, let's see, we can also, um, you know, switch it intentionally, but not in a normal mode. We could go to the dynamic mode, then the stiff suspension is set, but then I can deselect it, go for a little bit more relaxed setup, so that is actually possible. Um, yeah, and why not? I mean, as I said earlier, in some racetracks even, it can make sense to go for the more comfortable setup to have actually better results. So we let this truck pass there, because the road is a little bit narrow. Then we can already shift back ourselves, maybe even here to first gear and then... Beautiful. Uh, it's also a really nice sound, it's not exaggerated. At the same time, it is fun. Yeah, and that eight-speed automatic gearbox by ZF is doing such a phenomenal job. When you use the shifting pedals, while you're really throwing it out, it really gives you this punch, next gear, bang, bang. At the same time, when you're in a normal driving mode, have it on the automatic, the like this, this transition between the individual gears is super, super smooth. Ah, look at that. I love this beautiful countryside here in the German Eiffel region and this is also such a nice S band here. Let's go to the dynamic mode once again to check the oncoming traffic of course. But here look at precise input of the steering. I know exactly what I'm doing. Now a little bit on the brakes because of the oncoming traffic right there. I'm gonna accelerate out. Wow. Yeah this you you feel this unity from the machine and the driver. This is what this vehicle here is all about, actually. It is already the case in the normal versions of the Julia, definitely, yes. Here, of course, this V6 adds this more punch it needs, sound-wise. Also, in the idle mode, I told you in the last review, the normal Julia 2-liter turbo in, in idle sounds like a, I don't know, like a small diesel or something. That's, of course, not the case here. So the difference is definitely performance and also the sound. That acceleration figure-wise, it cannot catch up with against the all-wheel drive versions from the Germans. Yeah, I would say it's not that important, you know. This is more about being even more emotional. By the way, turning it around, can you go to reverse? Yeah, I have to live again with the <laughs> quality of the, of the rear view camera. Maybe I take it around, you know, look back myself. Really good input here, also from the normal shifting lever, still a classic real deal. Yeah, listen to that. So it is just a very satisfying sound. And 
to me, one of the key things is here also that you have this comfort. And I feel with this facelift, with this update, it is also more comfortable without being less sporty. So they also did some rework of suspension and steering input and so on. I really like it. In the very, very early reviews of the Julia, the steering was also too hectic, especially at higher speeds. That it was cool at lower speeds, but then when we are higher speeds were doing like this, it was like, Burr. but this is not happening anymore. So they tweaked that as well. And by the way, another in important thing here technology-wise, you also have a rear differential lock at the rear axle. So this also helps when accelerating out, of course. It's like GLC 63, I think it was. Yeah, some G out here in the middle of the bend. Yeah, this car makes every trip to work just, you know, just makes you smile. And I think this is balance also between the sportiness and the comfort is something you maybe would not expect from the Quadrifoglio because it looks very aggressive, looks extreme, and it can be very extreme, as I said, especially in the race mode. So pay attention when the electronic helpers are out of place, then this can also be quite dangerous. You have all the power on the rear axle, you can do donuts all the way around. But of course, when you're on public roads, keep it in dynamic mode. You're safer, and at the same time, you still have so much fun. If you want to check out the more civilized versions of the Julia, we have a review right here, or maybe one of the competitors from the Germans.